Hello everyone, I'm back again this year with uh, Mac OS Mojave. This is the latest version that's not even released yet by Apple. Um, this time I've installed it earlier because I, um, I did a small upgrade, or should I say it was not an upgrade, it was more of a side move. I um, I still have my old GTX 1060, but I've upgraded to the Radeon RX 580. And um, this is because of the native support and native uh, improved performance overall in macOS using this, this kind of Radeon cards. I mean, the 1060 was good, it was working okay, but the NVIDIA drivers are kind of crap, basically. And also, at this point, there are no NVIDIA drivers to run Mojave. So the only drivers are for the stable um, High Sierra versions. But also keep in mind that with NVIDIA cards, every time Apple releases a dot whatever upgrade, a small uh, incremental update, it, uh, it, it ruins your drivers. So you have to reinstall the NVIDIA drivers all over again. So moving to Radeon made my life easier because Radeon RX 580 and uh, the 480 series are supported natively in the OS, including Mojave. So starting High Sierra and Mojave, you get full acceleration right from the box with these cards. Besides this, there's no change. I still run the 16 gigabytes of DDR3 and the Core i7-4770K. Um, the uh, iMac, uh, the SM Bio, sorry, is the same one. It's um, the 14.2, I think, iMac. Um, because this is the Haswell iMac and I try to, to keep it compatible as much as possible. So this is about it regarding the upgrades. Now, uh, what I want to show you is that I got this working fully, basically. So there are no, um, no issues. You see here, this is the audio part. Everything is... Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's present here, all the connections line in, line out, display port, and also the microphone I'm using right now to record. If we go to PCI, you see all the PCI bus um, components here are listed. So there's nothing missing, the Radeon, the GPU card, SATA. I also added an NVMe M2 flash drive, and since I'm running an, an older chipset, I had to actually import some modules in the BIOS and refresh my BIOS with those modules in order to boot to be able to boot from the NVMe M2 drive. This uh, native card uh, does not support NVMe, so I've got um, an adapter, a PCI Express adapter with the NVMe, and I've modded the BIOS in order to support booting from that, uh, that type of drive. And you can see here that is showing natively as, uh, as an NVMe card. So right now on this drive, there's Windows installed. I keep the Mac on a different, uh, normal SATA hard drive uh, still an SSD by the way so pretty much uh, this is it the USB configuration is showing as USB 3 because I'm using the USB inject all text so this will allow you to basically have all USB ports from the start without you trying to manually add ports in the um, list files now what I did uh, here is I've uh, created a couple of, I've opened a couple of pages I want to show you. So uh, first of all, I go to this forum regularly because it's the best place you can go basically when it comes to Hackintosh. So the install of the, um, the Mojave version is pretty easy. What you have to do is download this image. It will download a raw, a raw file, use Etcher application, and afterwards um, write it to a stick. And that's everything you have to at least be able to boot and start uh, the installation. Now, I already have the, let me just remove this. So if I click here on download, oh, clear on download, it should be able to grab this. So yeah, it's downloading with around 50 megabytes per second. So uh, Google servers, are looking pretty good this time of day. So once you download this image, it comes in a BZ2. You have to unpack it. This is um, this is an archive basically, and you will be left with the raw file. Now, once you have this raw file, you put a stick in a USB stick, and either using Windows or Mac, you just follow these steps. On OS 10, you can use the command line to do the the, the burning of the actual image to the stick, or if you're running Windows, you can use the Etcher app 
and this is pretty simple. So you select the image, select the drive, click flash, and it will also give you the time and um, megabytes per second that is right into the stick. I mean, I'm using a uh, USB 3 stick. This is, let me check. I'm using a HyperX Kingston drive, so it's pretty fast. I mean, it's around 200 megabytes per second, right? So it takes a um, small time to actually do the, the writing. Once you do this, you see here the instructions. So you go to, it depends on what kind of chipset you have. This for me is chipset eight because I'm running at the eighth version of the chipset from Intel. I think this one's already, yeah. So you have to download, you don't have to do this. Just replace post installation, download the Clover folder and replace it in, uh, on your installation. I would also recommend that you get the latest Clover bootloader this is the version 4644 at this time that's just been released and also keep in mind that um, you should use if possible the latest version of the kext especially if you're using uh, the latest version of, of the, this beta os and i found a pretty interesting tool here and by the way these files and this stick comes like this uh, this image oh it's already downloaded so the image that I was talking about from this website already comes with um, with the files folder. So here you have all the tools you need to do the installation, configuration, and whatever. But this is a nice tool. It's called Kext Updater. And what this tool does, first of all, if you hit, uh, I'll, I'm, if you okay, if you hit start, it will check all the Kext you have installed and loaded to the system and check if they're the latest versions. But also you can download basic Kex like packages or a single Kex like this. So for example, if you want the latest, I don't know, USB injector that I am using. So this is the list of Kex I'm using right now. Just hit start. It will download. So here it is, the release, and you have the latest version of, of this file here. So this is a pretty neat tool to, to work with. Also, I'm using a DSDT, a patch DSDT, in order to get everything running, as you saw, like this. So, um, usually, if you go to the PCI, you'll see that this is empty. If you don't have the correct definitions inside your DSDT, it will still work, but it will not show up. It's more aesthetic than functional, but yeah, if possible, why not keep it uh, like a, as close as possible to a real Mac? Now, regarding the performance this is the result i got in high sierra uh, the latest dot six release and this is the the score that i've got from this beta of mojave so as you see it's not that different it's a little uh bigger score here on the mojave and it's lower on the multi-core here is big on the multi-core and uh, lower on a single core but it's pretty much the same thing it's um it's in the margin of error to put it like that so yeah, pretty much the, um, the installation is complete and uh, everything worse is expected. NVMe works, uh, booting works. There are the nice, uh, there is the nice team, sorry, that also works okay. So yeah, everything seems to be functional and also I'm happy to say that I found no major bugs or um, stopping points with the installation, with the configuration. Maybe I started later. I did not start with the initial release of Icera, uh, of Mojave, sorry. But also since there were no NVIDIA drivers, uh, and still there are no NVIDIA drivers, and I was having an old NVIDIA card, there was no basically no point of trying to install it. Right now it looks like the, uh, the Kex Clover is upgraded and uh, stable enough to, to run this. I would not suggest as a main uh, main OS, but definitely it's, it's getting there. So um, animations are smooth. There are no issues with animations. Uh, Adobe Audition that I'm using on a daily basis works. Um, the Creative, uh, what's ever called, the Adobe CC Creative Cloud, whatever they're changing the name. So that works as well. I did not try to install any um, Apple software like, uh, I don't know, the iLife or whatever it's called now suite or the iWork suite. I just use Microsoft Office for for, for work and uh, I still haven't got to install it here. But uh, I suspect it should work. There's no no uh, no motive on why it should not work. 
so yeah this that's pretty much it uh i'll do another video when the final version of mojave and ios 12 will be out and uh yeah we'll see from there what happens i mean this is still not configured to use my icloud because i don't want everything to mess up my the rest of my devices and my real macs and my iphones ipads and all that so i'm keeping this um i'm keeping it uh, <laughs> should I say, isolated at this point and not log into to the entire environment. Uh, yeah, so this is this is it. I see I saw that there are a couple of new wallpapers here. So there are the dynamic ones. Interesting. And there are the static ones that you see all around the Internet right now. So it's nice to have a change of scenery once in a while. But I'll keep the dynamic one, so if you put it to light, it will light up, put it to dark, it's night. And set to dynamic, it's somewhere in between, because right now at my location it's uh, it's night outside, so also the wallpaper turns dark. So that's cool. Okay, uh, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer in the spare time that I have in the chat section, comment section below. Thanks and have a good evening, I guess. Bye.